I woke up about an hour ago. It is 2 p.m. I'm having a well-balanced breakfast. Some, uh, some berries and cream, because you may as well commit to the bit. A couple months ago, my dad called me and said, oh my gosh, I found plaid on sale. How much do you want? So I got two different types of plaid. One is this beautiful blue, which I adore and have been agonizing over what project to do with it. So I found this picture on Instagram and it is from Mermaid, uh, the sewing channel. It's very beautiful and that inspired me to create a trouser and corset set, possibly a waistcoat as well, we'll see. Um, but most importantly, a pair of trousers out of this beautiful plaid because also um, the whole like pattern matching thing is a fun challenge that I'd like to get into with this. Needless to say, it's gonna be an interesting process. Uh, the patterns I'm using are actually historical patterns. They are from a uh, tailor's magazine called the Progressive Tailor. I believe, let me double check, I am using a, yep, I am using a 1930 and a 1937 pattern. Um, and they're not patterns yet, I have to draft them. Um, it's just the drafting instructions. I have given myself four days to do this, though I doubt that's gonna be enough. Um, I think I can make trousers in four days. I don't know about the rest, we'll see. But today's most important thing is getting the patterns drafted and drawn out using the instructions from the Progressive Tailor. And then we are going to uh, start a mock-up if we can, because I wanna make sure this is gonna fit correctly because I am very particular about my trousers. Usually I just buy a pair and then adjust them to fit me perfectly. I've never actually drafted, sewn, you know, done trousers from scratch. So this ought to be interesting. But one thing at a time. So on to drafting. So, got my big old piece of paper. I have my drafting instructions on the computer in front of me. Then I have some tools of measurement. This for the super long stuff because I don't have a yardstick. And then this for the very exact stuff because I have never trusted the sixteenths of an inch on this particular tool of measurement. And then a very sharp pencil, and I mean, very sharp. My parents have a pencil sharpener that is like the crank kind that's in the back of a classroom. The one that um, you would go to get up and show off your outfit under the guise of sharpening your pencil when really you just wanted to show off what you were wearing. That pencil sharpener. That's the one they have. So very excited about this. And there's not much else to do besides get at it. <laughs> Getting serious, we're whipping out the calculator. Oh, I did my math wrong. Mm. Okay. Okay, so I, I want the trousers high-waisted, but these trousers are meant to sit just above the waist on a man, and I have a very long torso, so I'm lengthening a little bit on here and we'll see if that works the way I want it to on the mock-up. I'm gonna need more paper. <sighs> you know, a lot of people find drafting like a stressful process, but I think it's honestly really peaceful. It's like a coloring book. You just follow the lines. Twelve to two. Are you filming? Yeah. This will be sped up though. Okay. Would I have done this math in any other situation? No. Chasing paper. I am so for being paid. It's insane. One could say I'm very for being paid. We have to check with the hubby first, sort of. I've darling. Been, I'm confirmed as my financial advisor. And I'm not even a real financial advisor. 
so um the this is i just finished drafting the front of the front panels of the trousers the rear panels of the trousers are almost the same pattern except for uh they have a little bit of difference at the bottom and at the top so rather than draft a whole new pattern i am going to add tracing paper panels on top of it and just tape them on little bits to where when i'm cutting i can fold these back and use the original pattern and then fold them back over and have it be the new pattern which i don't know i think i'm pretty clever but that's just me okay i have finally finished the actual drafting process so now i get to cut these out and get started on a mock-up. So instead of actually doing what I was supposed to do yesterday and doing the patterning and the mock-up, I just did the patterning and then uh, watched movies for the rest of the day. To be fair, it was with my mom. She's not feeling well, you know. It was worth it. But that does mean that now I have to do the mock-up today and get started on cutting out the trousers from the plaid fabric. But my mock-up fabric is just this old bed sheet uh, that I have been informed I am allowed to cut up because I cut up the rest of this set in high school and this is the only one left. <sighs> Let's get to it. I like how high it comes up. I think the the crotch looks good, like how I want it. Um, the sides are a little puffy, but I think that once it's in the final fabric, it'll look fine. Uh, it's a little long, but I'm gonna leave the pattern like this just because I would rather have to hem it up than, um, than risk cutting off too much. And then so far as the fit goes here, um, I'll need to make sure I leave room for a proper fly, but that looks pretty good to me. And then on the sides, like I said, it's a little, little baggy, but I'm not mad about it. And in the back, um, I think it looks pretty good. I'm debating on whether I should leave these as pleats or if I should sew them into darts instead, which would make them not have this shape here. Instead, it would lay flat against me so yeah i don't know i am pretty happy with the mock-up and so i'm going to start cutting in my plaid as i'm marking these and cutting them out i'm also making sure to mark along my pattern where the plaid is going to meet up at the seams to achieve that lovely pattern matched effect Then it's time to get to sewing, and sewing, and sewing, and even more sewing, according to the tailor's manual, to put the outer layer of the pants together. Okay, so I have stitched together the trousers, they are all put together. They're inside out right now. Um, so I have what could basically be trousers. I want to put in a zipper fly before lining and hemming it up. I do have a zipper to use and the fly that I am basing it off of is the one I have in these pants here, which is a paneled fly. So there's a panel here that attaches to the zipper and a panel here that attaches to the zipper. And then the panels are attached to the pants. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some panels out of my plaid and then I'm going to attach those to either side of the zipper, then attach it to the trousers. We have the zipper panel for the fly front. This is about an eight and a half inch fly front. This is the outside part of the zip that you won't see. 
because it'll be tucked in between the front panels uh, and it'll be offset slightly to the side to where the actual seam will be right here, but the zipper will be over here. And then this is what the inside looks like, nice and smooth so that it doesn't catch on um, my underwear because I've had that happen before and I want to avoid that at all costs. And then now that's left is to uh, pick open the front of the trousers and insert this. All right. I think I did pretty good with the fly. It's pretty seamless, like you can't see it, but it is there and it's it's not bad, you know? I mean like you can see like it looks pretty like funky with the stitching. I'll probably have to cover that up. But once it's zipped, you can't really tell that anything might be wrong with it. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, next thing is I want to pop a waistband on this just because it does not feel very sturdy. But I don't want to pop the waistband on. Well, when I pop the waistband on, I'm also going to put the lining in it because I'm gonna have the waistband sandwich on like this. And I wanna make sure that I also get the lining in that. And I'm just using my mock-up for the lining because why not? taken my lining and just tacked it in at the waist so that it stays in place and I popped together a waistband that I can sandwich on there and all that's left is to ta -da! we have a pair of trousers with a waistband now um, and I went ahead and started on the buttonhole um, I didn't finish it because I wanted to film this but I started on the buttonhole for the inside and then I found some hooks and eyes that are going to clip the outside to it, just like that. And I'm going to try it on and see how it looks after I get those hooks and eyes and the button on. The trousers now close. I'm not crazy about this, but it is what it is, it's fine. Um, but I went ahead and added some hooks and eyes and a button at the top into the zipper and that is how they close. So my parents started keeping the ice cream scoop with the potato peeler instead of in the same drawer as the lighters like we used to. And I'm not saying one drawer is better than the other, I'm just saying that why would we change that? Finishing touches on the pants, I just need to do a little hand stitching on some things that didn't meet up quite right. Just the hems left on the pants and we are good to go. The most important part of the hemming process was definitely making sure that everything was pressed very neatly and flat before I started hand sewing. So, um, pants are done. Yay. So excited and I love the way I wore them to a New Year's Eve party last night. Happy New Year. And I'm so happy with how they came out. Now it is time for the corset top part of things. For that, um, I have made I've made a few corsets and stays in my time. Um, and so I actually already have a pattern for a bustier top with a with um, cups. And so I'm going to do a little mock-up of this to just make sure I don't need any adjustments. Um, and then get started on cutting out my pattern pieces in our plaid fabric. It's fine. It's going well. Maybe not. It is. It is. I don't really know. And you know, it's not that it's... It'll be fine. We are at that point in the project where I am generally uneasy about how it's going, but the only way out is through. We have our mock-up 
which I like the way it looks so far. To really test it though, um, and to prepare for the next step, I have a bunch of strips of binding that I prepped. So these are going to go along all around the mock-up so that I can put some zip ties in there as boning and we can get started on putting that together. Okay, uh, so I started putting on all these boning channels along the mock-up, right? And I wanna put one down the center of the cups, but I also realized I want the cups to have foam in them as well. So I went ahead and cut out some, some old, uh, I literally took this out of a bra that I packed, but I have foam cut into these shapes and I'm just going to sew these straight onto the cups and then put the boning over it because um, I almost forgot to do that. Whoops. Now we have padding and boning put in. Uh, the boning's not as sturdy as I would like, but it's what I've got. So we're gonna keep moving forward. I don't have my grommets with me, so I can't grommet these, but what I'm going to do instead is uh, take some of my plaid fabric, turn it into a tube, and then use that tube to create loops along the edge um, so that I can hook the straps through them. If you remember, I made a video last time I was here um, about my little sister's prom dress. I'm using the exact same method I used in that video. After pinning together and sewing together the outer layer and the lining layer of the corset, it was time to flip them inside out and realize I had done this backwards. <laughs> we were so close! Why? It might be time for a lunch break after I... Lunch. Lunch. Alright, I am just going ahead and sewing up the hole that I used to turn this inside out. And once I finish with that, we have a almost completely done garment. Um, all that's left is a way to finish tying it up. So... I'm gonna do the same method I did to make these loops, which is just folded in half and turned inside out fabric to make a really, really long one. Um, that way I can have some lacing for the back. And then that should be it. Once it's all laced up, ready to go. Can't wait. trousers you guys I am so insanely happy about it I have made pajama pants before I've made like some shorts before but I've never made a pair of properly tailored trousers and especially not in a plaid pattern which is ridiculous and I just couldn't be happier with how they turned out and how they look and I will definitely be making them a staple part of my wardrobe now 
The corset, on the other hand, it's fine. It's not the best one I've made. I did what I could with the time and materials I had. I should have spent an extra day or two on patterning it instead of just recycling an old bustier pattern. And also I should have been a little more strategic with the boning, how thick it was, how thin it was, and where I placed it. But we live, we learn, and it looks fine. It's just not my favorite thing I've made. But the trousers I am ridiculously happy about. I have only done one other fly front in my life and I thought that it came out super good. And I am just, <laughs> I'm just really ecstatic about this. I am very happy about this project. Uh, updates for the new year, since this is my first video of 2024. 20, uh, Keep forgetting what year it is. First video of, of, of uh, 2024. I am going to try and make a monthly video this year. So every month I will put out a video. And I am also working on a website to sell some of my larger pieces of art and apparel that just don't really sell so good in person. But I have an online audience, so I'm going to try and make a platform for y'all to try and look at the stuff that I make, maybe consider purchasing it. Uh, speaking of purchasing things, I also have a Patreon and a Venmo. Patreon if you want to subscribe, Venmo if you'd like to just do a one-time donation. And I'm also on TikTok and Instagram. All of those platforms, I am in there as Art by LGO, and I hope you guys have the best day, or night, or whenever you're watching this. Have a good time. Bye!